Deep in the heart of the Philippine forest, among the ancient giant trees and lush greenery, lives one of the rarest animals in the world. A creature so closely linked to national identity and pride that it has become an inseparable symbol of the entire Philippines. It is the Philippine Eagle, the largest eagle on the planet in terms of length and wing surface. Unfortunately today, the fate of this beautiful predator is hanging by a thread. Still, his story has brought hope. It has joined together two distant countries, the Philippines and the Czech Republic, who are both working hard to ensure that this majestic creature does not become extinct. Our story begins on the island of Mindanao, where we set off with a team of Czech zoologists. We came to the Philippines because here, on the southernmost island of Mindanao, the last small population of the Philippine eagle still survives. It's the most endangered eagle in the world, and there are only 350 to 400 pairs left in the wild, which is very few. To stabilize the population, there needs to be at least once, preferably twice that many eagles. The fact that we're on this island is no coincidence. Mindanao is home to the only breeding, rescue and rehabilitation facility for Philippine eagles. Philippine eagle is now critically endangered and it means their numbers are declining so fast. And so this Philippine eagle foundations, the only ultimate goals is to save this species of birds from extinction. At the moment we have 35 Philippine eagle. So we do rescue operations, rehabilitations, and then after rehabilitation we release those birds who were fit to be released in the wild. But there were some other birds that were compromised of their health. So for those birds, we use them for the breeding program. The Philippine eagle, it's one of the most beautiful eagles or raptors in the world. And Filipinos love charismatic animals. And because of that fame, the Philippine eagle is now found in the highest money or bill of the Philippines. Everybody loves the fact that we have the face of our national bird in our highest denomination. And our dream is to make sure that the Philippine eagles are free to soar in the wild and that we have enough forest so that their species can persist for the long term. The Philippine eagle needs a large forest territory which will provide suitable nesting sites and also enough food. Interestingly, in addition to various reptiles, birds, and smaller mammals, it also feeds on monkeys. In the past, these eagles were intensely hunted as competitors of humans. Today, the greatest threats are the loss and fragmentation of their habitat and its conversion to coconut palm or rubber plantations. As a result, the population of Philippine eagles is still not sustainable, and efforts to breed them as much as possible are urgently needed. Most raptor species, including the Philippine eagles, are very difficult to breed in pairs, so this is where artificial insemination comes in. Basically, it involves collecting sperm from the male and injecting it into the female's fallopian tube. And if you're lucky and you do everything right, you get a fertilized egg. Despite many achievements in the past, the Philippine Eagle Center has not managed to raise a single chick using cooperative artificial insemination in the last 10 years. As a zoo, we have many decades of experience in breeding rare, difficult to breed, and critically endangered raptor species. We came here to help our colleagues at the Philippine Eagle Center breed these magnificent endangered eagles in human care in aviaries. Once we have successfully collected semen from the male, the first step is to check its quality. 
I'm putting together a microscope so we can take a look at the sperm. We'll look at yesterday's batch first. Consequently, we will also have to check the batch before insemination to see the sperm quality just before it gets into the female. It's working. Have a look. Oh, it's working. Okay, and let's see what we have. Yeah. See it? Really good. Really good. This is really good dose. Yeah. Once we have the sperm, we need to transfer it to the female in a safe manner. At the Philippine Eagle Center, it's more difficult because the females and males are so far apart. It is a harrowing journey of several hours in extreme conditions, as temperatures are often as high as 40 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the methodology we have determined is that the semen is transported in a special cooling device that ensures that the semen is properly cooled to a certain temperature that is suitable for transport. And that, hopefully, will be successful. Now we know that the sperm will be taken from point A to point B alive. After a tiring journey, we reach the breeding sanctuary for Philippine eagles, located right under the highest peak of the Philippines, Mount Apo. The high altitude and remoteness of this place create ideal conditions for successful nesting of females. They are kept under strict quarantine due to the threat of bird flu transmission. This could endanger the entire population. The inspection of the sperm quality after transport was successful, and now we can proceed to the insemination. All that remains is to hope that it will produce a fertilized egg. Our help has consisted not only in assisting with the actual insemination, but also in developing a technique for freezing raptor semen and preserving it for future years. We have taught the sperm freezing technique to our colleagues from the Eagle Center, and we also brought them all the necessary materials. They are now able to store the sperm in liquid nitrogen without our help, and will be able to use it for many more breeding seasons. With this cryopreservation technique that the Leverage so introduced to us, this will really help us in propagating our Philippine Eagle in the next future. It could be 30 or 50 years from now. We still have this sperm viable and be used in the breeding program. Oh yeah, it's moving. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. Both artificial insemination and sperm freezing are currently the best ways to increase the numbers of the Philippine eagle, which is already on the verge of extinction. Seeing a Philippine eagle in the wild is very rare. We decide to try our luck and head to the foothills of Mount Sinaka, the smallest nest site of Philippine eagles. This area holds a large fragment of primary forest, and it is here in these majestic ancient trees that the Philippine eagle has nested several times in the past. Upon reaching the observation platform, we immediately notice the elegant Brahmini kites circling in the sky. After a while, something we had all secretly hoped for happens. Look at the Philippine eagle. Oh, sorry. Over here, you're very lucky. Uh, you can see it's an eagle because of the... Oh, okay. this. <laughs> Just right now, we saw a Philippine eagle. It was last seen here in Arakan last uh, March 2024, so it's been months since it was last seen and we're very lucky to see it again during the breeding season. Excited by this experience, we leave the rainforest and walk by one of many sites where the Philippine Eagle Foundation is working to restore native forest ecosystems. 
So the Philippine eagles are very much forest dependent. Unfortunately, we have very little forest left in the Philippines. So if we really want to provide a sustainable home to our Philippine eagles, we need to bring back the forest that has been lost. Working with indigenous communities is very important in the effort to save the Philippine eagle. So we venture high into the mountains of Mindanao to visit one such community. These people are mostly reintegrated individuals residing in remote and isolated communities. Our Filipino volunteer doctors organized a free gynecological examination today for all the women in the area. Initiatives like this combine healthcare with education and have a profound impact. These communities no longer hunt eagles, but instead actively participate in their conservation by planting trees and reforesting. We realize that the best way really to conserve the Philippine eagle is work with the human neighbors of the species. And so that's where we integrate Philippine eagle conservation uh, with our community-based work. We leave Mindanao for a while and head to the neighboring island of Leyte, once home to a large population of Philippine eagles. This island has been severely affected by natural disasters. In 2013, it was hit by the strongest typhoon ever recorded. Typhoon Yolanda, as it was called by the locals, not only destroyed entire towns, but also completely decimated the population of Philippine eagles. The goal of the project is not only to successfully breed eagles, but also to release the offspring to new uninhabited locations, such as Leyte Island, where we have just arrived. We started with a few lectures at local universities and went directly to the release site, which was chosen for the future reintroduction of the Philippine eagles. This unique place is located in the heart of the island, in the middle of a lush green rainforest. It is home to the Mamanwa tribe, who for generations have lived in deep harmony with nature. Just a short distance from their village are acclimatization aviaries and a platform which hopefully could become a gateway to freedom for many captive-bred Philippine eagles in the future. Two individuals have already been released here and future plans are to release most of the raised chicks at this site. From my point of view, the forest is very suitable and it is backed up by a lot of research. So let's hope that many raised chicks will be released here in the future. Having completed our monitoring of Leyte Island, we return to the Eden Breeding Sanctuary, where we are greeted with exciting news. One of the females just laid her first egg of the season. In the case of an egg being laid, it was necessary to provide the best possible conditions in which the egg could incubate and hatch. We helped by providing what are probably the most professional incubators currently available for incubating raptor eggs. Everything is ready for proper incubation. Now we just have to wait until darkness falls to see if our efforts have paid off. The suspense could be cut with a knife. Now we have brought the egg, and we are going to try it on the egg candler to see if it is fertilized or not. So, turn off the light also in the incubator. Come on. So, it's fertile. Yes! <laughs> hey, congratulations! Yes. And you, you can see the embryo also. You do see it? Yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah. Small Philippine eagle! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I will put it back and then we can celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. The egg is fertilized, so the inseminations are working, which is great news. Now we just have to keep our fingers crossed that the egg will hatch. 
Our story is coming to an end, and we can't imagine a better feeling as we say goodbye to the Philippines than that we have left something behind. Our mission this year was mainly focused on the fertilization process. Our efforts have gone well. We've managed to fertilize a Philippine eagle egg. So I'm proud not only that our team was successful, but also that the year-long efforts of other colleagues who are not here at the moment have paid off. I strongly and firmly believe that our national bird has a fighting chance. What we really need to do is a collaborative effort, the government, the citizens, people of the world joining in, supporting the work that the communities are doing, incentivizing their conservation work. And if we do that, we believe that not only are the eagles protected, but also human well-being preserved. This beautiful raptor has managed to bring together determined people from different parts of the world with a shared goal to save it from extinction. Every single chick that hatches brings great hope for the future. We all truly believe that this is not the end of the Philippine Eagle story, but rather a new beginning.